Happy Arbor Day, everyone. I'm here in the Thomas Bailey Aldridge Garden here at Starry Bank Museum, surrounded by beautiful hemlocks. Trees like hemlocks and other native trees, such as pine and oak, were largely deforested here in New England early on. Believe it or not, many people by the 19th century could see for miles in some areas without seeing a single tree. Arbor Day and the celebration of planting new trees was established in America by 1872 in Nebraska. At first, this campaign supported the continuation of the lumber industry, yet soon enough environmental conservationists began convincing more and more people that planting trees was more importantly about education and that this new initiative needed to support national policy and education for conservation efforts for years to come. Now these hemlocks at the Thomas Bailey Aldridge Garden at Strawberry Bank are actual original plantings of the early 20th century. This is probably our most valuable living collection here at Strawberry Bank and that's why we want to protect them as much as we can. The woolly adelgid, very common insect pest on eastern hemlock, which you can see above here. Beautiful trees that we want to protect, so we actually spray a horticultural oil on these trees seasonally. About twice a year allows us to really manage the pests that have accumulated within these trees. If you have this problem at home, you might notice foliage dropping to the floor of the canopy, floor of the forest or your landscape, and you'll notice this kind of fuzzy white residue. And if you look closely enough, that residue might move. And yes, that is the woolly adelgid. Now, horticultural oils sprayed on trees, amongst other organic methods, is certainly one layer of conservation when it comes to trees. Now, damson plum is one of my favorite fruit trees here at Starberry Bank. As you can see, the buds are pushing out nicely. This will be in full flower very soon. Damson plum flowers very early in the season and brings in a lot of those native and introduced pollinators. Our honeybees will be going crazy when these open and shortly thereafter, we'll see fruit set. Now we have quite the collection of apples here at Strawberry Bank Museum. This is actually in our main orchard by our beehives. This is summer Rambo that is harvested in the summer as the name reflects. Now, as you can see, only leaves and maybe a few buds here. You can see the buds developing nicely. So we'll see those flowers very shortly. Now here in one of the crevices, I'm not sure you can notice. A little tricky with the light here, but I found one of the first lady beetles to appear on one of the branches. Very, very cool to discover these beneficial insects, some of which are introduced, some of which are from Native America. Now these go after certain insects that we don't want, like aphids and other things. So it's a good, good sign to see lady beetles in the landscape as we're managing everything organically. Now I'm in the Victory Garden currently, over by the absolutely enormous and beautiful tulip poplar. Now this tree is very significant to the site, connected to the Pecunis family. Now this was planted by Ronnie Pecunis when he was a kid for his mom on Mother's Day to celebrate the end of the Second World War in 1945. In full bloom, these large orange yellow blossoms will produce all over the sunny side of the tree. Really, really showy, not very fragrant, but big, beautiful blossoms. Yet again, in the Victory Garden, we can see this large silver maple just beyond. Now I spoke about Ronnie Bicunis. This was actually his property with his mother. Now planting the tulip poplar as well as this silver maple. So lots of history with original plantings here at Strawberry Bank. 
This will push out really nicely and offer shade to the landscape and also offer habitat for native insects and sometimes animals. I've actually seen baby raccoons climbing in this tree before, years ago. That was absolutely adorable to see. Now, white pine is extremely significant to New England's seacoast. Believe it or not, we actually have remnants of a forest that used to exist here on the seacoast all the way out to the Isle of Shoals. We believe this prehistoric forest existed even before Native Americans were here. So very, very long ago. Because of its straight and sturdy structure, a lot of the deforestation in New England was associated with Eastern White Pine. Now, Arbor Vitae is actually a cypress. Now, does anyone know how that translates to English? Arbor Vitae. Yes, tree of life. Now, a good historic tidbit about Arbor Vitae. Certainly a beautiful tree, part of conservation here at Strawberry Bank. But it was also used amongst other evergreens for vitamin C when a lot of people were combating the risk of scurvy or vitamin C deficiency. So trees for conservation, certainly for environmental concerns, carbon cycling, cleaning our air and water, but certainly throughout history used for medicinal purposes. Here's red maple, everyone. As you can see, compared to the silver maple that pushes out kind of a yellowish brown flower, these are absolutely crimson and red colors pushing out nicely. And let's get a little bit closer. Really, really beautiful this time of year. And again, that signal of season maples and a few other things coming out very early to kind of signal things happening as we approach late spring and certainly summertime very exciting this tree is right along puddle dock absolutely gorgeous this is oak even before settlers arrived native americans were using the fruit acorns to make all sorts of things, including unleavened bread. That's right, acorns were the original source for flour. And Europeans certainly learned this practice as well from Native Americans. Now here is quince. Now certainly quince has a variety of shapes and forms, sometimes shrub forms and sometimes tree forms. Let's go over and look at what we call European quince, which is really Asian quince. Many quinces were introduced to Europe and adopted those European names and eventually introduced to colonial America. Now this is Chase House behind, one of my favorite houses, absolutely gorgeous. I love that yellow color. And let's get a little bit closer. Now, unlike that previous quince, that bush type, this is more of a tree pushing out very early. Now the cool thing about large fruit quince, they are loaded with pectin. So this was actually one of the original sources for pectin and making jams and jellies. People were making extractions with quince. Getting that pectin out, quite the process, really, really cool. Hope you enjoyed the program today. Again, happy Arbor Day to everyone. Let's protect our trees, protect our environment. Conservation has been important throughout history and certainly today. This is Strawberry Bank.